This podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with a mental health professional. Hey, 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 family. Welcome back to the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. I am so happy once again to be here with you for this episode. But guess what? Before we get started, you know what I need you to do if you haven't done so already. I need you to click this little button and subscribe to the podcast, to the channel, if it's on YouTube. And then I need you to click this little bell so that you get the notification when a new episode comes up. Okay? Because y'all know we all in this together. Okay? All right, family. Hmm. So I am here this week so that we can all continue to grow and we are growing together. And today I want to ask you, family, this is a safe space now. Come on. This is a safe space. Are you the problem? Is the problem you? Do you have a lot of broken relationships, meaning broken relationships with like friendships, you know, friendships where all of a sudden, you know, uh, you can't really find a friend to kind of hang out with anymore because you feel like that friend was no good for you and this friend was no good for you. Or you always finding conflict with your friends, getting into arguments because this friend did that and then that friend that did that. Is that an issue for you? Or the workplace, do you continuously lose your job over and over again or want to continuously move jobs over and over again Hmm. because something is wrong with the boss at this job, at this job, something is wrong with the co-workers at this job. Okay, because the the atmosphere is is toxic at this job because the man's got his foot on your neck at this job and you can't move up higher. Is that a constant theme for you, like over and over again? What about broken romantic relationships? Do you find yourself where you're often in broken relationships over and over and over again? And the only thing that's consistent is you're in another broken relationship. Is that consistent where you always figuring like he ain't no good and he ain't no good. Ain't nobody out here no good. Or if you're, uh, uh, well, I'll just switch it around because I was getting ready to say if you're a man, but that doesn't matter because, you know, or you could be in a, a situation where you say she ain't no good. She ain't no good. Ain't no good women out here. Is that you where you believe that everybody else is the problem or your family where you feel like you don't even go around family anymore because there's always an issue with every single family member. Something is wrong with all of the family members, everybody else, not necessarily you. It wasn't you. You weren't the problem, but every single body else in the family system is broken, but you are the healthy one. Is that the issue? Because this is the deal. So you healthy there. You're the only healthy one, but then you're only, you're the only healthy one in your romantic relationships, but they are broken. You're the only healthy one in working relationships, but the places are all toxic. You got me. You're the only healthy one in friendships, but yet and still you've broken up with all of your friends or they're no good. Is that true? Is it? But this is what I want to know. Is the truth what you're thinking that it's everybody else or is the problem you come on family i'm not pointing no fingers this is a safe space this is a safe space to heal okay we i'm providing some grace and some space here we talking it's just me and you all right wherever you at in your car or you on you working out you know wherever it is driving at work right now at this toxic workplace and you got your earplugs in it's the problem you are you contributing to the havoc in your life Hmm. i think that you know as we grow we really need to look at that i really believe that it is worth you really dissecting these issues within your life to figure out 
huh, am I playing a part in all of these broken relationships in my life? Am I? Hmm. Okay, let's do some self-reflection. So now, here we go. What I want to point out is this. Yes, you can be working in a toxic place where, you know, uh, that you have a toxic supervisor who's jealous of you and they do have their foot on your neck, okay? We can call them the man or whatever you want to call them. And that could be true, okay? And then you could have um, some friends in your life where you've decided that it is unhealthy to remain friends with them. So I need to cut that friendship and cut that friendship and cut that friendship and let them go. That may be true. They may have been toxic. They may have been using you or they may be abusing you. Okay. So we can point the finger and say, yep, that job was toxic or yep, that friend and that friend, all that was toxic. Then you could have some toxic family members who always like to keep stuff going. Okay. Who always like to have, have, have some kind of conflict or start problems or, you know, who, who may be, who may have also, um, used you or abused you that could be true that could be true and so yeah you can point that out and you could have a toxic be in a toxic relationship with someone who is using or abusing you or disregarding you or disrespecting you all of those things could be true absolutely but this is what i want you to know is that you will not grow determined by what all of those things do. So whether they change themselves or whether they stay the same, your growth has nothing to do with that. I need you to hear this. Your growth has nothing to do with all of the things around you whether they change or whether they stay the same. That has nothing to do with your growth. You are in control of your growth. So the question that I would be asking you is, how did you get here? You know, how did you get here? And this isn't to blame you or to shame you. Do you hear that? I'm going to say it again because it's really easy, you know, for our subconscious and our trauma to take us to a place of feeling defensive right now and say, well, you know, is she saying that it's me? It's me. It's me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you that the reason why your family members are toxic is because of you. That's not what I'm saying here. So come on. Be a big girl, be a big boy. I need you to, we're going to grow. Let's grow. I need you to stand in this and just hear me. Just hear me. You can take your defenses down because I'm here with love. I'm just asking you, do you know how you got here? Do you know how you found yourself in this workplace for so long that's been toxic and been disrespectful to you? Do you know how you found yourself in these friendships that aren't really friendships that are toxic to you? Do you know how you found yourself in close to and close proximity to? Because I understand your family is your family. You're born into your family. However, when you recognize that family members are toxic, you get to control how close you want to be to them. Got me? How much time you want to spend around them. Like you get to determine that. So then the question is, yeah, do, do, you, do you take some time to ask yourself, how do I find myself so close to a family system who is abusive and yet I continue to go back to be abused again? Or yet and still, do, uh, do you ask yourself, how do I find myself in this relationship where this person uses me or abuses me, disregards me and disrespects me, but yet I keep showing up the next day like, hey, abuse me and use me again. I'm checking in. Heidi, hi, I'm here. I'm saying, just ask yourself, oh, why am I drawn to this? Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to say, Andrea, I'm on this side, the therapist over here, I am going to challenge you to think back to your childhood because there's some trauma, 
I'm telling you, <laughs> if your situations now that you're in are toxic and you continuously accept these toxic relationships, these toxic situations, it's all rooted in your childhood trauma. So if you were to go back to your, to your childhood trauma to say, okay, oh, what was it that I experienced in childhood that I was powerless to that taught me that this was okay, that this was okay behavior, that this was normal behavior and that I need to subject myself to this. What? What did I learn there? Something that I learned during childhood that taught me that this is what I need. Th this is okay. These situations, although they are painful, they are acceptable. I can accept these subpar painful situations because it's what I'm used to. And it's what I learned through the developmental stages of my brain. I learned as a child, this is normal. Toxic is normal. Ah, like it is, it is normal to have friends in my life who steal from me or who continuously use me and expect so much from me, but yet and still they don't, they don't, uh, they don't expect to give or do anything in return for me. You know, they expect for me to safeguard their hearts, but yet and still they don't safeguard mine. Why is it that I'm drawn to this? And why is it that I'm staying here for so long? Oh, what did I learn in my childhood that makes me feel or has me thinking, okay, that, yeah, this is normal. Because it sure feels comfortable. You know, I tell my clients all the time, it's like having one of those dirty, stinky blankets. You know, I think like on the Charlie Brown cartoon, I want to say his name was Linus. Was it Linus? And he used to always walk around with a stinky, dirty blanket. And if his name ain't Linus, y'all know who he is. And if you're too young to know about Charlie Brown, just Google it. So he was the character that always walked around with a dirty, stinky stinky blanket and everything around him it was just like a cloud of dirt or a cloud of dust and he would not leave that dirty stinky blanket anywhere hmm because it felt normal it was his emotional support blanket okay Although it was stinking and it was ratty and it was ratty patty <laughs> and it made other people feel uncomfortable, but it made Linus feel, feel comfortable and it made him feel safe because it was all that he knew. You got me? However, if Linus knew, because he grew up with that blanket, he was given that blanket at some time. Now, I don't even know, did it? you know, I don't even know that Charlie Brown went back and told a story about Linus's trauma and how he came about the blanket. But I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use this as a metaphor for life. But I'll go back to actually saying that Linus didn't really know. And I'm going to say to you, are you Linus? where you don't even understand that there are some blankets out here that have some thread count that's a thousand, thousand thread count, okay? And I mean, it feels so good to your body, you know, like 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 uh, like a different type of silk or different type of wool or cashmere. It feels amazing. It's going to be a new blanket going to be different it's not going to be the, the 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 dirty the stinky blanket that you know of and so you're not really used to it because it doesn't have the smell however it is amazing it is clean it'll keep you healthy because i don't know what you could catch from that blanket i don't even know linus at this point is probably immune to all kinds of diseases and anything that he could catch but if you get next to that blanket you might catch something you got me if you get next to the person that's walking around with this blanket or their childhood trauma and they're living out over and over again this toxicity then you might catch something from it you might start being toxic so Going back to the point of being afraid of letting the old thoughts, the toxic thoughts go because what they're doing and in the way that they're serving you is bringing you into more toxic situations like toxic friendships, toxic workplaces, 
toxic uh, family systems keeping you there, toxic relationships. You got me? So it's kind of like, let's work on, guys. I want you to work on breaking the ties because I want you to think about, instead of pointing the finger at that person for doing this, that workplace for doing that, this friends for doing that, this person for doing that, although everything that you're saying is true, Instead of just pointing the finger at them, now what I want you to do is to point the finger back at you and say, but wait a minute, what part am I playing in it? Yeah, what part am I playing in this toxicity? Why am I drawn to this toxicity? Because guys, that's the only way that you can create change and you can break dysfunctional cycles so that you can call healthier situations into your life. If you want a healthier workplace, if you want healthier friendships, if you want a healthier family system, if you want healthier romantic relationships, then you have to get healthy. You have to get healthy because you go wherever you are. <laughs> you like what, Andrea? You are wherever you are. And if you are un healthy, still thinking in an unhealthy manner, you got me, then you are going to attract more unhealthy situations to live out in your life and create more misery in your life. Hey, family, come on over here because I have something for you. Starting off with a go-to guide for keeping your mind healthy and strong. This right here is the Bible to mental health. It's your mental health Bible. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. Hmm. Everything that you need to know about keeping your minds healthy and strong is in this go-to guide. Where you get it from? Well, you get it from awisebrown.com backslash shop. But in this go-to guide, honey, in this mental health Bible, you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out the benefits of aromatherapy oh, and how it can shift your mood. But guess what? You don't have to go anyplace else to look for your aromatherapy because your girl's got you, okay? You can get some aromatherapy here. This is aromatherapy is in this candle. This is called a slice of happiness. It makes me tingle, like literally makes me tingle. A slice of happiness. This is a cruelty-free candle with no parabens, no formaldehyde, and no known suspected carcinogenics. Now, you know, you go out here and you find these candles that smell good, but are they good for you? Are they good for your brain? Come on now, get real with yourself. Well, this one smells delicious. And it's good for you. Made with essential oils. It's a soy candle. Amazing. Uh, you can burn it or you can just walk by and smell it. Lord have mercy. It's so good. Okay, so that's your, your candle, your aromatherapy, which raises the dopamine in your brain. That's your natural feel good. No transmitters in your brain. All right, y'all. And, oh, I'm a part of you. You're a part of me. We are a family. We got hoodies now, and these are unisex hoodies, and they wear well, they wash well, and they feel so good. So you can wear them over your clothes, you know what I'm saying, and look dope, or you can wear them as your clothes with nothing under them, which I like to do often. And when you travel everywhere, I mean, every time I wear them, I'm moving around, people are always asking me whether I'm traveling, going to the supermarket, what's that, who's that? And I'm like, mental health is a lifestyle, because see, this is on the back. Okay, they come in white and they come in black. I'm like, join the family. Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast. So there you go. Family, don't you ever say that I ain't give you nothing. You get all of these things from awisebrown.com backslash shop. All right, I got your goods. I got you. You don't have to go anyplace else. I'll see you on the other side. But it's not until you work on your stuff, you work on you, then that you can call new, fresh, 
healthier things in your life and it will feel good to you. Because now if we were to give Linus a brand new blanket with a thousand thread count, it's just silk and it's royal and he'd probably throw it away because he's so used to the dirty, nasty, ratty, patty blanket. But if we get Linus into some therapy and into some self-work to figuring out why he's drawn to that and not drawn to anything bigger and better, if we could get him in, then he'd understand that God made him to be amazing, that God made him and created him to be abundant, that God made him and created him to be prosperous. And then he will start to look in those directions and no longer be attracted to all of the toxicity in his life, like the workplace, like the friends, got me like the family systems, got me like the romantic relationships. And he will be looking higher over all of that for prosperity and abundance for healthier situations. Ah, so that's why I'm here to ask you family. Is it you? Are you the problem? Because it only lasts for so long to sit and point the finger at someone else. Yeah, they're rude. Yeah, they're dirty. Yeah, the man's got his foot on your neck. Yeah, this 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 person is horrible. Why are you still engaging with them? Ah, hmm. Because yeah, okay, they can be wrong for you. You know, they can be unhealthy, right? They they can be all of those thi- those things bad. You know, all everything nasty that you could come up with. Yes, I'm going to validate. That's what they are. And now what? Because just you identifying that they are dysfunctional or that there are dysfunctional things in your life, that's only the first step. If you just stop there, you will not create change in your life. You create change in your life by identifying the dysfunction in your life and then making a decision, committing to and choosing to change you, choosing to grow. Okay, that's how you change your life. So my family, I ask you, is the problem you? Hmm, what's holding you here? Is the problem you? And if it is, that's okay. Because that's the reason for life. We are all on this journey. The journey is coming back to our most authentic self. Right. Y'all know I've said this before several times in the Torah, in the Quran and in the Bible. They all say that we are created in God's image. We are little God bodies. OK, born in perfection. But then we go home. And we get sidetracked. <laughs> then we start living out the dysfunction that we've learned. However, the journey of life is about coming back to that God in you, finding your authority authentic self, finding your authentic voice, finding you. And you cannot find you by always pointing the finger and blaming and shaming everyone else. At some point, and I think this is what they said some time ago, I don't know. So when you point the finger, what are those thumbs doing? They coming back at you, pointing the finger back at you. But you know what? For me, Andrea, I'm a girl who likes to do work and I like to encourage you to do work. So I'm just, I ain't going to say just because the thumb is pointing back at you. I want you to turn the finger back at you and say, okay, my love. And that's how you speak to yourself. Okay, my love. Yeah. What part are you playing? What did you learn? What glasses do you have on that you need to get a prescription change for? Because you up here projecting you know, projecting through these lenses and they're the lenses of your childhood trauma. All things that we experience in life today on the outside of us is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. All of the things on the outside of you that you are faced with, you know, whether it's drama, trauma, pain is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. So if you want to change what's on the outside, baby, you got to go in. You got to go on the inside and you have the power to do it. 
Okay. But let me tell y'all how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to do it. So I got a few steps here that I want you to do. So when you're in these toxic situations that we call toxic or dysfunctional situations, right? I want you to check in with yourself. So let's just say you're in conflict with a friend and now you in a space where you get ready to blame your friend. Oh yeah, that was you. That was you. this person ain't no good. I want you to stop. Okay. And I want you to ask yourself, hold on, check in with yourself. What part am I playing in this? Hmm. Did I start this argument? You know, did I, did I have to say this or did I have to do this or what could I have done differently? And then, okay. Cause that's what I want you to ask first, but then I want you to think a little bit deeper. Why am I here? <laughs> Because if over and over again, this is repeating itself over and over again, this is repetitive, then I have to ask myself, what is drawing me to this? And family, I got you. Okay. Because the first thing was check in with yourself. But now when you go to what is drawing me into this, I, I, I don't even know why. It's going to be challenging for you to find that out on your own. So then that's when I'm going to encourage you to get you a therapist. Get you a therapist. You can go back two episodes before where I teach you how to find a good therapist and shout out to everyone who reached out and told me that that was helpful to you. Always, you can put comments down and let me know, you know, on this journey, if anything that I've taught you has been helpful or if there's something that you want me to teach you, but you can go back and look up and find you a good therapist and they will help you get to the root of why you keep finding yourself in toxic situations, wanting to blame everyone else and the wanting to blame everyone else. It's just our natural inclination just to defend ourselves. It ain't me. It ain't me. Cause we don't want to sit in that pain. It ain't me. It's this person. It ain't me. It's that, you know, don't, nobody wants to feel like a heel. You know what I'm saying? However, it's not about you feeling like a heel or a bad person or a wrong person. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But the, the reason that I want you to look inside or you get you a therapist to help you peel back the layers is because if you want to change your life, you have to start by going inside. So you get you a therapist. That's number two. Number three is I want you to validate your feelings. Validate. You can validate your own feelings. A therapist can do that too once they hear your story. But you can validate your feelings of if you're in a toxic situation, as we're calling it, and you start to feel hurt or you feel disregarded. If you feel overlooked, you validate your feelings because you are worthy of validation. You are worthy of validation. So yes, I feel like this. I feel like this now. You can feel one way because of a story that you're telling yourself. It doesn't naturally, I mean, absolutely mean that the story that you're telling yourself is correct. So you can kind of check in with the other people around you to see if the story is correct. But that's different than feeling the feelings. You're human, you have a heart, and you can feel feelings. So there's two things that can be true at the same time. I can feel my feelings. My feelings are valid because they're mine. But now I can do a little more work to check to see if the story that I'm telling myself is my childhood trauma or if there's something that's actually occurring. OK, and then what I want you to do is I want you to develop some good habits, some good, healthy habits. OK, what are you feeding yourself? How are you taking care of? Of yourself. And this is the truth. How are you taking care of yourself? Meaning, are you exercising? What are you feeding yourself? What nutrition are you feeding yourself? Because I want you to build you. And the more that you take care of you, the more you feel worthy of being taken care of. And that creates a shift. So what, what are these habits? And you can learn more about healthy habits in my book, Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind, <laughs> and make mental health a lifestyle. And then guys, what I want you to do is I want you to practice gratitude. So instead of always feeling like you need to be in a space where you're pointing a finger at everybody else and you've already made the story out where you're the victim, this is all happening to me. This is all happening to me. Life is so bad. This is all happening to me. No, 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 no. You already know you checking in with yourself. You can find you a therapist. You're going to validate your feelings. You're going to get you some good habits, some healthy habits. And then I want you to practice gratitude. What are you grateful for now? Turn your attention to some of the things in your life that are going well for you now. <clears throat> 
in order to create a shift to get more in your life, you have to be grateful for what you already have. How is God going to bless you for some with some more if you can't appreciate what he's already given you? Got me? Practice gratitude. I am grateful for. You got me? I am grateful that I woke up this morning. I am grateful that I can sit here and give you these lessons right here for free on whatever platform this is. Like, I literally am grateful for this. <laughs> like, I am grateful. I am grateful. You understand what I'm saying? That I have a, a car to drive. I'm grateful I have some place to sleep. You know, what am I grateful for? You know, just the little things, big things. What am I grateful for? That's what you ask yourself. What am I grateful for? And practice gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for that. Yes, and that is how you increase abundance in your life by showing gratitude for what you already have. Because how is God going to give you more if you can't appreciate what you already have? Okay, said that twice, but because because I mean it and I believe it. And then the last thing I would say is I want you to start trying to focus on positivity. Focus on positivity. So let's go back to all of these different toxic situations that you may find yourself in where you think they are the problem. And they are the problem. That is the problem. And that is the problem. So while you are on this journey of doing self work, while you are still in this situation, as you are going through these trials, I want you to focus on not all of the things that are negative about that job that's toxic, but try to focus as you're growing, got me, on anything that's positive. Because that's going to sustain you while you're there until the shift occurs and you find another opportunity. Got me? So that's what you focus on the positivity. What is positive? If you continue to focus on everything that's negative in the current situation that you're calling toxic, that you believed before this podcast is everybody else's problem, that negativity is only going to keep you there. It keeps you trapped. It keeps you there. But if you create a shift and you think about "Mm, what's positive about this experience, I wouldn't care if you came up with 10 things and nine of them. I think that's a lie. You if let's just say if you came up with nine, but I'm going to say you came up with eight things that was negative. I want you to focus on the two things that you find that are positive. Focus on those two things because focusing on the positivity is what's going to keep your mind right so you don't lose your mind during this process. You got me? It's going to keep your mind right so you don't lose your mind during this process. Okay? So, hmm, y'all have the steps. You have the steps to really, to to self-actualization, to figuring out why is it that I keep finding myself in these toxic situations? Why is that? Why is that? And how is it that I can create a shift from a powerful stance, not from a victim stance with woe is me, all this is happening to me, all these relationships are bad, all of, this job is bad, this person is bad, and all of that can be true. You got me? But at the same time that that's true, we acknowledge it. But if we want to create change, we go back to where? To inside, to me. How is it that I created this? How did I create this? And Once we figure out how we created it and you see how powerful you are, how powerful you are, because you got yourself here, (laughs) even if it's dysfunctional, even if it's painful, you got yourself here. So once you can acknowledge all the power that you have that got you here, baby, then you can take that same power and create a shift to get you up out of here. Hallelujah. Did I hear hallelujah? Yes, you did to get you up out of here. You got me because you are a powerful being and you did help to create this. So now with the awareness, you take that power and then you create something else, something new, something abundant, something powerful because God created you to do so. Okay, family? All right. So I'm going to leave you with the question that I opened up with. Is it you? Is it you?
are you the problem? Well, if so, hmm, that's an easy thing. All right, family. There was another episode, and this is your girl, Andrea Wise Brown, and I love you long time, and I can't wait, honey, to see you again on the next episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle Podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell, the notification, so that you know when a new episode is up.